Hey, today we're talking with Navy veteran Steve Taylor from the Franchise Consulting Company. Steve, uh, some interesting things. Uh, we were talking about franchise and everything before we hit the record button. Looking forward to that. But before we get to all that, take us back and tell us what you did in the Navy. Sure, sure. Um, actually, I went to the Naval Academy uh, after growing up in the thriving metropolis of uh, Fresno, California. But uh, I was a surface warfare officer, so I was served on a couple ships. My last uh, assignment afloat, I was a weapons officer on a uh, essentially an amphib. It was um, um, a converted amphib into a flagship. Um, then uh, I went ashore for a short time. I ended up in the Bay Area, uh, San Francisco Bay Area. Worked in Silicon Valley for about 14 years before I, uh, I purchased a business, which um, ultimately it turned out to be a franchise and uh, really grew to love the model. About three years ago, I sold that and uh, embarked, uh, uh, became a partner in a, a rather large company um, uh, representing franchises uh, and other businesses uh, to, uh, to interested buyers. So you were a franchisee originally, you ran a franchise successfully and they eventually yeah. sold it? Yeah, I, I sold it after about nine years. It's, um, uh, it's actually, it was kind of a, to me, it was kind of a funny story because I, I literally went to bed on a Friday night thinking, yeah, okay, what do I need to get done Monday? And I woke up, um, Saturday morning and I thought, you know what, it's time. A, a seed had been planted a, a few months, uh, prior, got a phone call out of, uh, out of the blue from an old friend of mine. And, uh, I said, why don't you? Why don't you come look at what I'm doing now? Maybe you want to join us. And uh, uh, ultimately, that's what I, I decided to do. But uh, uh, yeah, the, the, the short story is uh, uh, one of the things I absolutely enjoyed uh, best about owning a business was uh, changing people's lives and changing the trajectory of their lives and being able to meet uh, their needs and uh, help them and um, help them change uh, uh, whatever they're doing. I helped several people start their own businesses, for example, when I was a business owner. And that's essentially uh, what I do now uh, in my current role. Yeah, in regards to franchising, I know a number of stories from friends and associates been in and out of the franchising business. A number of them, great success stories. Some of them, disaster stories. Um, <laughs> And then a lot of them, you know, that like they were a franchise that was great for 30, 40 years when the, when the founder was running it and then the founder sells out and all of a sudden the rules change and the franchisees get, get, you know, expenses go up. So you hear a lot of different opinions about franchises out there. Um, you know, one of the things, especially for somebody coming out of the military or military spouse, she's used to living in that, that, uh, that rigorous, you know, um, structured environment. Um, a franchise already has all that stuff set up for you and you're basically there to execute the plan. Um, and sometimes that's advantageous if you've never run your own business, because you just go out into the wild blue yonder, you don't have any structure at all. You have no idea what you're doing. It can be very difficult to figure out how to get profit in print into profit mode. And so sometimes a franchise, the structure of a franchise can work really well for uh, someone who hadn't been in a business for themselves, like a lot of military veterans. Yeah, no, no, no. That's that's absolutely uh, true. Um, I uh, um, I started my business or started my practice, I should say. Um, think I was going to reach out to military veterans, and I've kind of continued that. That's uh, kind of my my passion to work with veterans, and uh, and one of the reasons is um, it's such a good fit. Um, you know that I'm sure you you know who said this. I mean, we all hear it. You know. No, I, maybe it was Jim Mattis, uh, uh, General Mattis, but he said something along the lines of uh, no war uh, plan survives uh, first contact, right? Mm -hmm. And um, the, uh, uh, the thing is military veterans uh, have an experience of, of understanding what the plan is, but being able to be very creative and uh, to work harder. I, uh, I mean, the thing that appealed to me was um, I'm no Elon Musk, and and I'm not going to invent the the next new, um, you know, better mousetrap. Let's say, but 
uh, I think I can work as hard, if not harder than most anyone. And I certainly can read and follow a plan. And uh, that was the, the value proposition about franchise that really appealed to me. Um, and then, you, you, you know, the, what, what I do now is um, I'm, I'm doing my best work when I'm educating. I know uh, you're like, well, you're like a sales guy. Well, yeah, I am. Uh, but I'm doing my best work in that uh, when I'm educating people. I mean, a lot of people don't realize this, but, but the franchise model's been around an awful long time. Um, you know, that, that's how a, a lot of the voyages of discovery were essentially franchises. Uh, you know, that sort of thing, the, the Virginia company that, that settled Virginia or the East India company, those were both franchises. And um, uh, the, model, the model does work, but again, what I, I do or my value proposition is I put you in a position where you can really dive into uh, different opportunities that make sense. Uh, for you specifically. And um, uh, so you do your due diligence. And, um, you know, I would say, uh, uh, you know, be in a position to make a high confidence decision at the end of my process. So you, um, your experienced franchisee owner yourself, um, if, if somebody's looking to get out of the military or they've, they've gotten out and maybe not like where they've landed and living in the cube farm, whatever it may be looking to, they really like to run their own business, but they don't really know they're not Elon Musk and don't have a great idea for the new Tesla, but they could come to you, the franchise consulting company, and you will help place them or help evaluate a number of different franchises that are out there and find the best. Because that's really one of the most important things, right? Is making sure the franchise fits the individual. Yeah. No, absolutely. And, and um, I mean, let's, I, I mean, I'll, I'll give you a 20 second overview. I mean, I would, anybody who's interested, doesn't matter if you have zero credit, zero money, give me a call. Let me, you know, let's talk for 10, 15 minutes. And maybe it's a, a plan to get that, that initial lump sum uh, usually necessary, but, but uh, there's so many different factors and there's so many different um, different opportunities out there. I can, um, what I do is I kind of cut through all that. And, uh, because I do represent so many, so many different concepts, I can figure out the three or five or 10 absolute best franchises for your particular situation. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the first thing I ask is about goals and objectives. What do you, what do you want to do when you grow up? Right. And I, I ask myself that all, I'm 57 years old and I ask myself that, all. what do I want to do when I grow up? But um, that's, a, that's an important question and we work together to answer that. Um, and then um, we, we go through a process of learning again together. And then at some point, usually about two weeks in the process, we start introducing uh, businesses into the process. And then you have the opportunity to evaluate different businesses in, uh, in parallel, as opposed to, you know, looking up the internet and, you know, Chick-fil-A is a great example. A lot of military folks love Chick-fil-A. I love Chick-fil-A, mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, their, their, uh, their whole process could take 18 months or two years from, uh, you know, the first email to, to, you know, yeah, why don't you come aboard and check us out, you know, that type of thing. Um, and then, uh, whereas I, I allow you to, to evaluate multiple franchises in parallel quickly, um, you know, a certain what would be good fits for you. Um, and, and, you know, the flip side is uh, my client companies, um, what they're looking for me is introductions to people that are interested, focused, and qualified to be franchise owners. So um, the benefit uh, to them is I don't, I don't introduce, I, I filter out, um, inappropriate, um, candidates, right? So, uh, when we get to that point, we know there's a good enough fit that there's a good chance that, um, uh, you would be, uh, uh, a good franchisee, uh, for that franchisor. So it's saves time, saves, uh, ultimately money. There's no charge to my clients. 
uh, for my services, I get paid like a realtor or a, a, you know, a, a, a headhunter, let's say, mm-hmm. um, only if you decide to move forward. Yeah. And cause there's not, if somebody wanted to do their own independent research on finding a franchise for themselves, there's not really, I don't even know of a place they could go to, to search different franchises. It's all probably all going to be paid ads and all that people trying to push their own franchise. So really somebody like yourself that franchise as a franchise consultant, um, especially if it doesn't cost the franchisee anything, um, like you said, you're basically paid as a headhunter. So you probably have an intimate knowledge of, um, I think how many different franchises are you, do you have arrangements with? Uh, uh, somewhere between 350 and 400. Yeah. Um, yeah. It kind of varies almost day by day. Right. But yeah. Um, yeah, I, I mean, that's other than talking to clients. I mean, I just jumped off a call early to be on the phone here with you Um but I spend a lot of time doing research um, on different uh, different concepts, and and again, you know, for franchise, I, I mean, we were speaking about this before we uh, we jumped on. There's there's opportunities. There are people out there, companies out there that make it extremely uh, financially viable for even with somebody with a, a low net worth to to join their company. Because they recognize the skills um, that a, fran- uh, a former military uh, member may have, and mm-hmm. um, you know, obviously, if you can you can plunk down fifty or a hundred thousand dollars or two hundred or five hundred, you know, the, the options just just go up. But um, uh, yeah, there are people out there, and and again, I'm I'm uncovering them every day who really are willing to, you know, put their, their um, money where their, um, you know, their veteran, veteran supporting mouth is. <laughs> yes, that's not too cruel. <laughs> so there are a lot of franchises that are offering discounts, incentives, whatever it may be to the veteran community. Very, very deep discounts. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, that's interesting. I've, um, we've had some other franchisers on the, on the show over the years and, um, some of them are offering some pretty, some, some really good deals. Um, what for, if somebody's coming right out of the military and they really don't have a whole lot of money in the bank, do they still have options as far as loans or financing to get into franchising? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's not as easy. Um, uh, but, um, there are opportunities like that. And, uh, um, you, you know, I'm, I'm thinking of one right now. I mean, um, I don't want to get too far in the details, but um, they'll essentially make it cash neutral. They'll loan you everything you need or, you know, to get started. So um, it could be virtually a zero, um, zero investment on your part. Mm-hmm. Um, and they, uh, uh, yeah, you you probably, I, I don't know the exact math, but you may need to take another job. Uh, but it's also, it's not something, it's not a Monday through Friday, nine to five type opportunity. Mm-hmm. Something that's, that's, you know, maybe a third of your weekends would be occupied for. So yeah. um, just kind of, uh, kind of depends. I mean, it's, you know, in that case, it may be something where you can do reserve duty and run this franchise and do fine. I mean, if that's, um, you know, and that's, that's kind of what I walk my clients through too. I mean, everybody's situation is different, right? No, I, I've never met two of any one type of person or same situation or, you know, anything like that. And, um, you know, it's, uh, uh, every situation is unique. Yes. All right. Hold on. Hold on. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Sure. All right. Back talking with uh, Navy veteran, Steve Taylor from the franchise consulting company. So Steve, what's, what's really hot in, in the franchise businesses right now? What's working? How, what are people making money with? 
you know, the past year or two, people have just super focused on their on their um, their homes. So home service concepts, and that that's been all over the board. Anything to do with the homes, you know, it could be uh, insulation, it could be roofing, it could be gutters, it could be fences, it could be, you know, things like. Um, you know, junk removal or exterior maintenance and painting. Um, believe it or not, there's technology that's going in painting where you could um, uh, paint your whole house in one day. And by whole house, I mean roof, uh, vinyl window frames, everything. Um, really look at um, look look beautiful. Um, yeah, it's just. That, that's the segment that's really been doing well. Now we're seeing a resurgence of QSRs, which are um, uh, quick service restaurants. Um, those historically are a little more of an investment, but um, there are some low cost, uh, you know, both extremes on that. Um, quick service restaurants, uh, that's a nice way of saying fast food, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Um, what else? Gymnasiums are coming back. I mean, I, uh, uh, it, it was a little bit of a shock uh, when, when all the gymnasiums were shut down. And if you read the news at all, you see Peloton's not doing well because guess what? People um, invest all this money on an expensive spandex and they want to go back to the gym and uh, mm -hmm. um, you know, show that off, I guess. And uh, yeah. so gymnasiums, uh, boutique gyms, um, uh, you know, that sort of thing. And there's a lot of like B2B unique stuff. Um, you know, we, uh, you used the example earlier when we were offline about uh, upholstery repair. I, there are a couple, I, I mean, it sounds mundane, but there's, there's money in repairing leather couches and, and seats and cars and, and that sort of thing. And um, uh, just, you know, it's not a huge investment to get into. I mean, and by that, I mean, you know, certainly under a hundred thousand, some cases well under $50,000, mm -hmm. um, situation where you work as you set your own hours, um, and depending on the in income level, um, you want to achieve, you work, uh, as hard as you want to. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about home services, for example, like let whether where you whether you take like you know window washing or paint house painting or something like that, if somebody already knows how to wash windows or paint a house and they're pretty good, what advantage is there of putting a bunch of money up front to join in on a franchise as opposed to just I mean, something as simple as washing windows and painting a house? Why does why do you really need a franchise around that? It just seems simple enough and the cost of entry is very low you know, without going in, going the franchise route. Mm -hmm. um, well, I think um, uh, most franchise ors do not want franchisees uh, working in the business. They want them working on the business. I think most entrepreneurs do not want to work in the business. I mean, you read the e-myth and I, I think they use the example of the, uh, the guy who had a bakery shop and spent all his time baking pies and not building the business. And the, I think the objective of a franchisor is not to have a franchisee uh, that's a great painter. In fact, most of them say, hey, this is a painting franchisee uh, franchise. We don't want painters. We want people open to learn enough about fran um, painting to lead a team. Uh, so that's, I mean, the mindset's a little bit different. It's business people. It's not painters, to mm -hmm. use the painting example. Um, I think you're when you're purchasing a, a franchise, you're purchasing some branding. So, I mean, again, not a huge deal for maybe a window washing company, uh, but the, the more complex the business, I mean, you know, what do you think, you know, McDonald's, um, are you, are you buying a franchise? Let's use McDonald's. Are you buying for the hamburgers? Because, um, between me, you and the light post, if I want a good hamburger, I'm not going to McDonald's. I'm going because I know what I'm getting. And mm -hmm. I think that's, um, 
you know, the case with any franchise or any franchisor, they're looking to build a brand and um, extend the brand. And they're looking for franchisees that want to do that. Um, and then, um, you know, uh, I, I live in the Bay Area, you know, uh, what's the, the Golden State, you know, strength through numbers. And, and I think franchise, uh, franchise orts are the same thing. They're building a system mm-hmm. um, where they can leverage numbers. I mean, I, I belong to a franchise, or I should say I was a franchisee of a system with about 150 different franchisors. And my best advice came uh, from other franchisees. And you don't get that with a paint, house painter, for example, where you're going to call the, the next house painter and act, ask them advice how to do something. I don't think so. Uh, but in a franchise system, especially one that you've done your due diligence and know that it's a functional, uh, non-toxic <laughs> environment, people are happy to share information. They want to see their brother franchisees be successful. And, uh, you know, frankly, for me, that was one of the most valuable things. Um, uh, but certainly starting up their, you know, vendor relationships, um, you know, initial training, all that are, are important as well. It's kind of a short, uh, question, but long answer. I hope I, I covered it. <laughs> so you, you said that, a lot of franchisors have heavy discounts, even crazy discounts for to get people from veterans from the veteran community into their franchises. What are some of the things, I mean, we, we know you're a Navy veteran yourself, but you know, seeing it objectively, what are some of the things, well, first of all, let me ask, do you really see a big difference when a veteran buys a franchise as opposed to maybe your typical c- civilian? Um, do I see a difference? Now, I, I'm not, so I'm all front end. I would say one out of every seven franchises is owned by a veteran. Hmm. Um, so um, I think writ large or, yeah, I think you do. I, I think it's a, um, um, I, I think the transition is much more smooth for a franchise e with a military background. I really do. They're used to working together in teams mm-hmm. and um, understanding uh, the concept of being mission focused, um, using a plan, but also being uh, uh, mission focused to the plant to the point where, you know, if the plant's not working, you ditch it. So. Um, uh, I, I would say absolutely just, just look at the franchise industry as a whole, uh, just because of the numbers, I think it speaks to the success, um, of Frank, of military veteran franchisees. Sure. Um, well, that, yeah, that's good to hear. So in, from your experience, what do you think the, do you, you don't happen to know, like, uh, like look at it, like small business administration data. They're saying that like 20% of brand new businesses, 80% of brand new businesses are typically going to fail. Um, we're talking brand new, not like not a, not a franchise. Um, but 80% of current businesses that are bought succeed. Um, and the reason I mentioned that is, there's been a big push, you know, we have throughout the country, we have a lot of baby boomers that are aging out. And a lot of these, there's, there's so many businesses out there. Not, I'm not talking about franchises for a second here, but the HVAC company, the electrical contractor, the plumbing contract, all, all these companies that have been owned for 40 years by somebody they are aging out. They want to sell. There's a big push to try to get veterans in to buy some of these businesses. Cause there are a lot of small towns that you know, this company may employ 50 or hundred people. It's a big deal to keep it going. They want somebody to take it over who's going to do right by it. And so there, there's a lot of data out there supporting that if, if a veteran buys an existing business, they have an 80% chance of succeeding. If they start their own, they get an 80% chance of failing. So it's, it's completely flip-flopped, you know. Um, do you happen to know, I know this is a really hard question to answer, and of course, with the franchising rules and laws, like you can't ever say, oh my God. But like, what I'm trying to, what I'm trying to get to is 
are your chances better of succeeding as a franchisee than just starting from scratch on your own with the, with your own idea? I mean, obviously they are, but I just didn't know if you had any data to support that. <laughs> You're right. That is a tough question. Um, there is data. It I'm is trying available. to get you thrown in franchise jail here. <laughs> yeah. The, no uh, promises. I can't make you promises. <laughs> You know, uh, the, 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 I don't know if you ever heard the joke about, you know, 73% of all statistics um, made up are made up on the spot or something <laughs> like that during the discussion. Um, I have seen the data and it's, it's extraordinarily high. I, um, I'm not worried. Well, I am worried about jail, <laughs> um, but, but it, it is the data I saw was there's an advantage franchise versus an independent business um mm -hmm. let me give you I, I let me give you just kind of a subjective example uh and i'll use myself is when i when i started looking at businesses to purchase um i my accountant introduced me a couple of his clients that are looking to sell or or take investors you know that sort of thing and and um it was all wrapped up in the personality, you know, it was Joe's, you know, bar and grill and Frank's, you know, shoe repair store. And, you know, part of that was uh, predicated on, on the amount of money I had to invest. But, but the thing is, they were wrapped up in the personality of the owner, right? And people went in to talk to Joe and Frank always polished the shoes in a certain way. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing with the franchise is you're walking in or you're not walking in, but you're, um, you're able to uh, assume a system that's personality independent. Uh, so uh, if they've done it correctly, right? I mean, the owner, especially a long-term owner is gonna have his imprint on the store, but it, they, he's gonna have as a franchisee, he's gonna have the systems that are common with other franchisees products in common. And then you've got this, this franchise or this corporate structure that's prepared to coach you through the transition process, through the startup, you know, and the operations and all that. So I would say, I mean, that's a big difference. Um, I think, um, you know, the, the other piece of that is, you know, there are some franchises that uh, have resales, for example, and there's some big names where they're, they expanded hugely the last, you know, 40 years. And now they've got their first owners or first generation owners that are looking to sell. At the same time, they're trying to refresh technology. Well, I'll tell you, some 67 year old uh, owner isn't necessarily going to be amenable to replace their point of sale system. Yeah. Uh, so, so there are resale opportunities in the franchise world, and you get kind of the best of both worlds. Um, the, the other thing to think about is there are, um, you know, there, there's one company you mentioned, um, HVAC, for example, uh, their whole business model is um, uh, purchasing mom and pops, right? Mm -hmm. Either people wanting to get out of the business or um, they're, you know, this guy's owned and operated a truck for 20 years. He doesn't necessarily want to get out of the business. But, you know, it's, you know, he could get an hourly wage in excess of what he was making as a business owner. Mm -hmm. uh, and he has to have to worry about setting appointments, you know, paying for gas, paying for his vehicle, um, you know, finding helpers, all that. So it, it turns out to be a win, win, win. Right. Yeah. Okay. There are different models. There, I mean, it's, there's no unique uh, approach to franchising, that's for sure. Yeah. I mean, really, if you, if you really want to run your own business, but you don't have the faintest idea what it is you're going to do, you might want to consider a franchise. You know I mean, it's not a bad way to go, um, especially if it's the right franchise for you and, and the corporate structure is, is honest <laughs> and, and true and, and loves their franchisees. I mean, that's really where it all, what it all boils down to. So, um, and there's a lot of veterans that are getting out. They're like, yeah, I'd love to run my own business, but I just don't know what to do. So I guess I'm just going to go to a job. Let's talk. <laughs> <laughs> if, if i'm talking about you you need, need to give uh, give steve a call so all right how do we find you um okay i got the world's longest email address but hopefully it's memorable it's steve taylor at the franchise consulting company.com 
uh, I've got another one that I could use as well, but that's probably the easiest one. Uh -huh. um, I'm on LinkedIn. Um, you know, I would uh, either that or uh, give me a call, 925-344-5981. Awesome. Um, even if you're just thinking, even if it's an idea, I would love, I, I talk to all types of people and, you know, and it, it doesn't matter if you're retiring as a, or leaving the service as an E4 or an 08. I've, I've actually talked to four star generals, um, <laughs> no four star admirals yet. I wonder what that has, to, but, um, some names you've probably heard of, um, but everybody's kind of exploring entrepreneurism, entrepreneur and entrepreneurial <laughs> efforts. How's that? Um, <laughs> but, but I just, I love talking business. And if you've got an idea, you want to call me, please do. Sounds great. All right, Steve, well, thanks for sharing your entrepreneurial success story and what a great opportunity for anybody, military spouse, veterans getting out of the military that need, need somewhere to get started. Uh, you know, they know they don't want to do the corporate America thing, but maybe they don't have the idea for their own business. I mean, it's, it's a great way to go. And somebody like you who um, you have a vested interest in, in somebody who's looking for a franchise, you're not trying to push them on one particular franchise uh, by any means. So um, you know, you represent 350 or 400 different franchises out there. So it's, that's a great way to go if, if you're not sure about what you want to do. So thanks for sharing all that great information and, uh, look forward to seeing your future success. Thank you very much. You bet. All right. These two veterans are Oscar Mike.